on a previous episode of The Code Always Wins. After trying everything, and with a simple adapter and a keyboard, we had finally gotten access to the operating system menu on our $500 X-Men vs. Street Fighter and Marvel vs. Capcom Arcade 1 upcaps. At that point, we had to confront our demons with our Wi-Fi internet, and were hanging onto an anticlimactic cliffhanger created by this vile, terrible YouTuber. Will us, the heroes of our own story, be able to play our favorite games on these arcade cabinets? Find out on this episode of The Code Always Wins. Ready! Bob 3D, what are you doing on my show, man? <coughs> what, what do you mean? I'm Bob 3D, The Code Always Wins. You're in the wrong universe and trying to take my show. Okay, fine. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about enabling USB debugging, sideloading applications through Android, and HDMI out and capture to any device. So what are we going to need here? Just like in the first episode, we again need to use a USB keyboard and mouse. It could be a combo like this Logitech here, but it doesn't have to be. We're also going to need this micro USB to USB hub, and I'd recommend this one with multiple ports. We're also going to need a USB to micro USB cable. The only thing, it has to support data because it has to work with this thing called Android debugging. So there's actually a special flag that gets sent on the signal and most cables are made in a way that's too cheap and four out of five times it's going to end up being a problem that your USB cable seems like it's working but doesn't work. So I'm not trying to be a shill here but I have a link in the description for this specific one which I vetted and definitely does work if you find a need for it. For the second part of the video we're also going to need this HDMI to micro USB device. Now this isn't a typical device. It's actually going to upscale your device from a proprietary PCB format to 1080p60 and uses an integrated CPU to do that. Now the brand of this is Mirror Screen and I've also confirmed that another one called Rank Chip also works. This was used on Fighters Evo for Marvel Superheroes vs Street Fighter tournament and speaking of that huge shout out to Rev and Blast for testing this with me and just being pretty patient and brave to be some of the first people to use their cab stream and they're actually using this to show you high quality big blue HDMI content so I would go and check that out. So having this device is completely optional, you can still follow the software part of this tutorial and it will probably be referenced in the near future. So continuing from the first episode where we connected our keyboard to the cab, then through the calendar app we accessed the menu, we are now going to connect to the menu again since we can do that now without workarounds and unlock USB debugging which is going to give us a connection between the computer and the arcade. No more worrying about the details with that, just follow along and everything will be just fine. Are you ready? Come on! Okay, with our cab booted up, the next step is going to be familiar. With our keyboard, while holding the Windows key, we're going to press the N key, as in Ninja. We're going to click the cog icon to go to the menu. This accesses the settings, and we're going to press down to go to system, because the mouse is pretty buggy. So you just press down and up here once you click in. And then you're going to press enter to go to system. And now we're going to go to about tablet by repeatedly pressing down and then enter when we get there. From here we're going down to build number. Again just using down to navigate. On build number we're going to press enter five times. Enter, 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 enter. And you my friend are now a developer. Hackerman. He's the most powerful hacker of all time. And we've just enabled some developer options. This is going to enable a standard set of options that have been available on most Android phones. So next we go down to developer options and press enter. We can scroll down and once you get to USB debugging, just press enter. You can see this dialog and it's going to say allow USB debugging. Left and right to go between OK and cancel. You're going to make sure OK is highlighted and then press OK. And you've just enabled USB debugging. But wait! There's more! And so there's one other setting that we should double check here. And from where we were, we just keep pressing down, 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 and enter on select USB configuration. And we have to make sure that it's set to media transfer protocol. And just in case you plugged in a certain type of device or something, just make sure it didn't change. And so you can press up and down and enter again 
And now we're going to exit by pressing escape and then going back and pressing escape again to go back again. And now we are back in the game. So before we actually connect to your PC, we're going to need to download some software resources that will recognize your cab as a device properly and then to be able to communicate with it. So in the video description, you're going to find a resource guide and one of the first links you're going to see is to get a Google USB driver. And when you click on that link, you're going to go to this page and this driver is just to help you connect from the computer to the cab. So we're going to click here to download it. You're going to get a license agreement and you probably won't read it. Maybe you should, but at the bottom of that agreement, you're going to see this download and grab that. So I'm using Edge, which is kind of like Chrome. Um, so I'm going to go to the download folder and I am going to right click and extract all if I am on Windows 10. Extract. And then you should see a folder called USB underscore driver. Click into that. You're going to see your Android Win USB. You might not see the extensions depending on your settings. You're going to right click on that and press install and open. You might see a warning, click yes. The operation completed. So now you have your Google USB driver. So also in the video descriptions resource guide, you're going to find these things called SDK platform tools. So this is software development kit platform tools for Android. And the main thing that we need is just ADB or Android debug rate, which we talked about earlier. So you're going to follow the link provided and this may change. It's just a general idea. You're going to go to, to SDK platform tools for Windows, similar to the last one. You're going to be given lots of legal terms, whether you want to read or not, it's up to you. Download the Android platform tools for Windows. It's pretty standard stuff, though. I'm, just, I'm mostly kidding with it. And just like we saw with the USB driver, we're going to see another download show up. for using Chrome or Edge, something similar to that. And you can open to see it in the folder. Now you're going to right click, you're going to extract all, and make sure that show extracted files when complete is clicked there. You go next, you're going to wait for it to extract. This might take a few seconds or a few minutes. So this window is going to pop open once the extract is complete if you had that checkbox clicked or you can click into that folder that shows up if not and then you click platform tools and so you're going to see all these things here and the main thing we want to be able to access really quickly is this thing called adb.exe it's an executable so we're going to actually click up here in windows anywhere to the right make sure everything is selected or you can press Control a to select all and you're going to press Control c to copy or you can right click copy then you're going to start you're going to start typing in when you press windows or you click that start button path and you're going to say edit environment variables for your account this seems really complicated but don't worry it's a really simple thing we're going to do you might need to give some permissions but you're going to want to go to path here and then you're going to want to click new and then you're going to want to right click and paste there so when you when you have a new entry all you're doing is adding that thing that you just copied and you're going to click ok now we can press Windows and press CMD. You're going to see Command Prompt. You might want to right click and run it as an administrator. You're going to see some like permission prompting. If you see that, just press yes. Uh, we're not doing anything malicious, but I wouldn't follow random tutorials. This, this one's okay. I mean, you have to go with, go with me on this. But if you type ADB now, you're going to see that there's actually a link to be able to type that anywhere, no matter where you are. And that's going to allow us to be able to connect to the actual arcade cabinet once we connect it, which we'll do next. So if your keyboard is still plugged in, you're going to have to unplug this before plugging in your USB debug cable. Because you can't have both an OTG and the USB debug at the same time. They're actually two different modes. Explaining is sort of out of the scope of this tutorial. So before our next step, we're going to make sure that we leave the cab in the on position and this is really important. Behind my cab, you're going to see that I have a multi-plug power adapter screwed in here. Just so that I can do the next part easier. Okay, partially. It's also a wire thing. It's pretty nice to have. You don't necessarily need that. You can also unplug the power wire here. Whatever works for you. You can use the power wire or you can flip the switch on an outlet here. The cap switch on and the power applied, you're going to wait 4 to 5 seconds before connecting the USB end of the debug cable to your PC. It's too late here. I'll have to restart the power and do it again. If you establish a good connection, you're going to hear a series of sounds that indicate the devices are good, like with the last device connected sound occurring just about when the arcade starts the game selection screen. 
So the first time that you connect your PC, you're also going to see this USB debugging pop up come up. You have always allow from this computer and you're going to just use your joystick here. You don't need a keyboard and you can press down to initially select this option. You can just press jab and then press down to go to cancel, right to OK and then jab to confirm again. It's just like the menus in the actual arcade cabinet. Now that we have connected to the cab, need one more set of resources. This is some script and also the mirror plug app that's going to help us to cast to HDMI out. It's not going to hurt you to actually install this if you want to follow along. Otherwise, for people who want to cast or upscale their HDMI out, this is going to have all of the files that you're going to need to do that. So you're going to go to the contents of this repo, quick download link, and then you're going to click that. It's going to automatically download and you're going to see a download folder. When you open that, you're going to go right click on it extract all in windows make sure that show files extracted when complete is clicked and you're going to click into the folder that's there you're going to click into the empty space in the top right as we did before control c or copy and then you're going to click start menu you're going to type cmd then you're going to right click here you're going to run as an administrator except the prompt then you're going to see administrator open you're going to type cd space and then right click to paste that directory then you're going to type in cd space scripts and now from here you are going to type connect dash to dash cab.bat and you should see it say connected to an ip address and if not it's going to say no connection found and you're going to see some other things pop up so if you did find that you don't have the connection you're going to have to start over from where we have the four to five seconds otherwise we should have wi-fi now and now that we have a Wi-Fi connection we have to unplug the USB from your PC to have one device and now we can just run the commands from here and it's gonna be a lot more convenient now that we are not wired and we don't have to worry about disconnecting until you turn the cap on. So with the command line window still open we are now going to install the mirror plug app and this is gonna let us upscale our screen so we are going to type in adb install dot dot slash apk slash mira plug dot apk press enter it's going to say performing streamed install we're doing it over wi-fi so it's going to be a little bit slower but it's going to say success so next we're going to run a script that i wrote just to streamline things so that we don't have to enable the permissions for us and we're going to type setup dash mira plug dot bat press enter and you'll see all these commands spawn up this is just going to give it the necessary permissions on your cab and it's a little bit tricky because you can't just do it in one go so just figured to automate it for you and so you're seeing all these commands run and at the same time you're going to see a bunch of stuff kind of popping up on the cab and going through and so after skynet has taken over your cab for about 30 seconds with that script you're going to see a purple rotated screen i wouldn't worry about that things will go right back to normal when you're streaming into your cab on the actual game again so we're going to take our mirror plug device and we're going to connect it to the back of the cab from the micro USB. And we're gonna take our HDMI device, our monitor capture card, and then plug the HDMI end into that. And so similar to there, you're gonna press down with the joystick and then jab to select the checkbox to never show that again. And then press down and right, and then jab or light punch on okay again. That's gonna close the dialogue. Don't worry about the updates there or anything. I'm just gonna press medium or strong punch to exit again, and then you'll be back in your game. So a few caveats about this method. When you disconnect the HDMI and you're gonna connect it again after your cab has powered off and you powered it back on, you're actually gonna have to go through the five seconds with the PC again, but you don't have to do anything on the PC. You just have to establish a debug connection and probably much more important is that this is going to actually add ping to your game so you can't use your own games while you're playing unless you want some lag or to frustrate the other person but you can completely stream other people's games or if you have two cabs so there's a few people on youtube who might find this useful but anyway this was the most useful application i could find with just one side loaded application that doesn't have a launcher or a bunch of crazy things to set up. However, in the very near future, I will be going over that much sooner than this tutorial. So I hope it was really easy to follow. I hope it was somewhat enjoyable. I know there were some consistency issues. It was just had to learn quite a lot.
to make a video this long that was also edited. So uh, anyway, thank you. So if you've gotten this far and you're still interested, I can hook you up with the wormhole that goes to Universe 8. Over there, you can subscribe to The Code Always Wins.